Hey everyone, we're excited to bring you an exclusive tasting experience with Patrick, the export sales manager of the prestigious Chateau Saint Rosling. In this special session, we'll uncover the captivating flavor, unique winemaking techniques, and fascinating history that make this winery truly stand out. So get ready to embark on a delightful journey as we dive into the world of Chateau Saint Rosling together. Cheers! So welcome to Provence, welcome to Chateau saint Rosling, one family estate uh -huh. that has been existing for the last uh, seven centuries. Nice. So 700 years old, one of the oldest uh, estates in Provence. We located uh, 30 minutes uh, drive from uh, Saint Tropez. Marco Bealicio, a winemaker, has been with us for like since 2016. Okay. And he's giving that uh, direction, uh, the style that we have, uh, really like focusing on, on uh, freshness, mm. Uh, mm. high acidity, uh, gastronomic roses, solid ones. Beautiful. So the soil is mostly clay, limestone, and sandy silt. It's a 300 hectares property. Uh, but 70 hectares for the vineyard itself. At Chateau saint rodin you have 11th century chapel, sorry, and 12th century cloister. Uh, well, we can visit it uh, because we attend weddings as well. There's a big, big connection uh, at saint rodin with the uh, with art. So saint rodin herself, at first, it's a religious uh, figure based on the three miracles. They are uh, famous people, artists, that design a mosaic. Marc Chagall did a, a proper mosaic about one of the miracles uh, about uh, saint rodin Giacometti as well, wow. and every every year we have uh, artists at the estate. Um, so there's a big big connection within uh, well, art, yeah, the artwork itself, the art and, and the, the family. And when you go walk around through the vineyard, you see all the different uh, pieces of art. When we go to Le Cloître, the 12th century cloister, very unique, uh, but also connected to the American history somehow because it used to be a, a, a military hospital for the uh, American paratroopers uh, during World War II. We're focusing on the minerality, the salinity, uh, the finish as well. Also interesting story, the Lamp de Medusa name comes from the Brotherhood of uh, Knights of Medusa. And Lamp in old French, Lampé, mm -hmm. it means uh, the fact of drinking together, che you know, cheering together. So it means the, the, night, uh, yeah, the knights of the Brotherhood of Medusa drinking together. In 1949, yeah. the former owner's wife, she designed uh, the packaging of the Lamb de Medusa. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so she took the codes of uh, Alsace, well, uh, yeah, Alsace bottle on top. Uh, you can easily recognize it. Yeah. And the bottom is related to a perfume bottle from, the, from Grasse, the capital city of perfume in the, in the south of France. So yeah. what's so different about this one? Different parcels, uh, the yield uh, also is different. The Lambda Milieu is, is our uh, flagship, the yeah. one we're famous for. How long do you guys prefer to age well, it? Well, I would say like two years like for this one. Mm. And then we go with the chapelle and you notice the difference as well. A glass of Lambda Milieu, for example, is an invitation to another one. You have this long lasting finish, high acidity, and makes you yeah, want to eat at the same time. You can either have it like for drink like that, but also during a lunch or dinner. Are they um, found the same specific plot every year? They're based on the uh, on the production we have uh, per uh, a varietal. Mm. He has to find the right balance to maintain a certain style. Got it. So he has to really adjust based on the on the harvest we have every Got year. It. The, yeah. the, the production is very very limited. Uh, we only produce ten thousand bottles a year. Mm. So. We sell it a little bit in France and in different export markets, but 10,000 bottles is very nothing. Uh -huh. De La Chapelle. Basically on this one, it's more like a Bandol style Cru Classier. It's, it's uh, Mourvet driven, 85% mm. of, of, of Mourvet, sorry, mm. and 15% of uh, Grenache. So all the vines as well, and two, two specific uh, parcels. Nice. But yeah, very limited production, low yield, and this is oak as well. Mm. So that's the only one from the range. That's it from the rosy range that is oak uh, for four months. So it brings that extra uh, richness, muscle, um, but maintaining the freshness as well. It's very important. This one has been ranked one of the top best uh, seven roses in the world uh, two years ago. Mm, what? So we did Lamb de Medus Red. So we have something like 12% 12, 12 of the production now, more or less, are meant for reds. So 80% for roses. 12 for reds and 8 for, for whites. It's uh, Syrah based, mm. it's in the Lambda Midges 2019. Syrah, Syrah driven and the rest is for Cabernet Sauvignon. 
It is oak for uh, 12 months. Very, very round, uh, rounded mouth, smooth, uh, licorice notes, peppery as well. Anything else I should know about the wines, the wineries? Or... Yeah, one of the specificities of, the, uh, of Chateau saint rosin and that's the reason why it has been created and built there seven centuries ago, is that there's another one spring coming, out, coming under the whole vineyard. Mm. Yeah, so there was an hermit hiding on top because there was the, uh, the spring. And when you visit the estate, you see the water like from different at different spots. You see that the water is coming down step by step, and the, under the uh, the whole uh, vineyard there's this underground spring. So it's great for us because it it, it allows us to avoid any water stress uh, and maintain a stable uh, quality in terms of uh, wine production, and grape production, mm. and it's very very unique. Yeah. Thank you. That was really cool. Thank you. What you could possibly do? Well, this one.